In this problem, we're told to find how much work is done by the horizontal force, F sub P, which equals 150 newtons on the 18 kilogram block when the force pushes the block 5 meters up along a 32 degree frictionless incline. B, how much work is done by the gravitational force on the block during this displacement. C, how much work is done by the normal force. And D, what is the speed of the block? Assume that it is zero initially after this displacement. So I'm going to go ahead and draw what's going on here. So this is going to be our incline, right? So here's our block. So the incline, we're going to have a block on it, right? So this is the block. And so we know the block is going to be 18 kilograms. And so it's also going to be at an angle, right? So this is the incline, and we know it's going to be 32 degrees. It's also going to have this force, F sub P, pushing on it, right? So a horizontal force, which is this right here, F sub P. And so it's going to be 150 newtons. So let's go ahead and start with A. So A is going to be uh, the work done by the horizontal force on this block, right? It's going to push up 5 meters too, so it's going to go up 5 meters. So A, so you need to know that the formula for work is equal to force times distance times the cosine of uh, the, the angle, right? Which is the angle between the direction it's going and the force. So let's go ahead and look at this. So what is our force going to be? So we know the force is 150 newtons, right? Times the distance, and they tell us it's traveling 5 meters. So times 5, and then the cosine of theta, what's going to be the angle between these two? So imagine this one is flat like this, right? But this is going to be up 32 degrees. It's easier if you imagine the force was right here, right? So this one's going to be up 32 degrees, right? So it's this way, but it's traveling this way. So the angle between the two is 32 degrees, right? Because we're finding the angle between the force and the direction it's going. So the direction it's going is this way, but the force is this way. And the angle between them, 32 degrees. So cosine of 32. And so if you go ahead and do this, this is going to solve for the work, right? So it's going to be... Uh, 636 and so this is gonna be about 640 so about 640 joules so that's gonna be the work for that one and so actually what I'm gonna do is just leave it as 636 so 636 joules my bad so 636 joules so that's your answer to a let's move on to B so keep in mind same formula force times distance times the cosine of theta and so for this one, uh, what we're going to want to do is uh, it's going to be based on the gravitational force of the block. So work equals, what is gravitational force? Essentially, it's just mg, right? So our force is mg times uh, the distance, which is we still know is 5 meters, right? I'm just going to write d for now. So let's just plug in the numbers, actually. So m is our mass, 18 kilograms times gravity. We know the constant of gravity, 9.8 times the distance it's going to move five meters still right nothing's changing about that but the angle is going to change so what's our angle going to be so if you imagine it right here right imagine this is going to be mg but the block's moving this way so if you imagine this is 90 degrees right but it's going to be 32 degrees above that and we're trying to find this whole angle right here right the distance between its traveling and the force so if you add these up you're going to get the whole angle 90 plus 32 is one tw uh it's going to be 122 so 122 cosine of 122 and that's going to be if you go ahead and do this right so you do 18 multiply that by 9.8 so do the multiply that by 9.8 uh you're going to get minus 467.4 joules so i'm just going to leave it uh just going to leave it as 467 or you can round it however you want to do but this is going to be your answer to B, right? So minus 467.4 joules. Now what we want to do is go to C, right? So C. So C is going to be, uh, you can solve it. I'm going to show you how to solve it, but uh, you should be able to tell the answer right away. Uh, and I'll show you why after I do C. But C is how much work is done by the normal force. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So W equals force times distance times the cosine of the angle. So work equals the force. Uh, due to this, right? It's going to be equal to mg times the cosine of theta, right? Because we have mg going down on this block, but the y component of it, or this component, is going to be mg times the cosine of theta. So the normal force is equal to mg times the cosine of theta. This isn't really going to matter, though, but you'll see why in a second. So mg times the cosine of theta. Multiply that by the distance, which is, I'm just going to say d times the cosine of theta. 
So work equals the mass, which is 18 times G, which is 9.8 times the cosine of theta. And this theta is just the 32 degrees times the distance, which is five meters, correct? Yeah, so five meters times the cosine of theta. And so this is where you're, uh, it's gonna become apparent. So the force is like this, right? This is what mg times the cosine of theta is. It's down this way. And so the what you're gonna realize is the block is traveling this way, right? So it's gonna be a 90 degree angle. So the angle between it's traveling and the force is 90 degrees. So it's the cosine of 90. And what you should know about the cosine of 90, it's zero. So really this whole work, since this is zero, this whole thing is zero. So the work is gonna be equal to zero. And so it's gonna be joules, right? So zero joules. And so that's what you gotta realize. So if you ever have a perpendicular force like that, right, usually it's the normal force, it's gonna be equal to zero joules. So that's gonna be your answer to C. Now what we wanna do is move on to D. And so I'm gonna erase everything on screen now. So if you need it, uh, write it down, but I don't have enough room. So I'm gonna erase everything. So yeah, so there we go. And so for D, we're trying to find what is the speed of the block? So we're solving for velocity. And so there's a few things you need to realize here. So we need uh, you need to know that work, right? So work is equal to F times, or so the work essentially is, the way you're gonna wanna solve this is by saying the work of, so you have these individual components of work, right? So we have all the components, we just solve for them in the last few. And so we know the work or the total work is equal to the work due to uh, the push, right? So the push, which is just the block pushing it, plus the work due to the gravity, right? And then plus the work due to the normal force. This is zero, so you don't really need to add it, but I'm just going to write it out. So your work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That's something you need to know. And so the change in kinetic energy, though, we can rewrite as this. So it equals one half times mv, your final, so your final velocity squared, minus one half mv of your initial squared. And this is where we're going to be able to solve the problem, right? So what you should notice is they tell us, assume the velocity is zero initially, right? So essentially, it's just equal to one half mv, uh, the mv final squared. And so what we're trying to do is, uh, this is going to be equal to the work, right? And so we can say the work equals one half, right? Because this is zero. So because this is zero, this whole thing becomes zero. So it equals one half m times v, the final, right? That's what we're solving for, v sub final. And so what we can do is just solve this equation, right? So the work is equal to this. And so if we want to solve for V sub final, because we do know the work, right? It's just all of them added up. And so if we multiply both sides by two, right? To get this by itself, two W equals M V final. I'm just going to call it V from now on. So V squared. If we go ahead and divide both sides by M, and then we, or I'll do that in the next step, two W, which is the work over M, and then square root both sides two times W over M. And so what we can do is just plug it in, right? But keep in mind what W is, it's gonna be the total work. So what we have to do is add up the works from the different ones. So if you had it written down, uh, that's good, but it's gonna be 636 was the first one. And then plus uh, the gravity one, which was minus 467.4 and then plus zero, right? This one was zero. So essentially it's just 636 minus 467.4. But I'm just going to write it inside of the equation. So it's just the square root of 2 times the work, right? So this is your total work. So 636 minus 467.4 over the mass. And so they tell us the mass of the block was 18 kg, right? So the square root of 2 times 636 minus 467.4. And so over 18. And so... If you go ahead and do this, you're gonna get it equals 4.3 meters per second, right? Meters per second since it's velocity. So 4.3 meters per second. So this right here is gonna be your answer to D. And so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.